What's going on everyone? Welcome to the first commentative video on the channel. You know, I'm starting something new, uh, hopefully integrating this into my future videos but to hopefully cover different topics, processes, concepts. So feel free to leave any suggestions you might have in the comments section, what you wanna hear me talk about. And also be sure to leave a like on the video and also subscribe if you haven't already. And without further ado, let's get started. So for this video, I wanted to go over my painting process. A brief overview of each layer you know the what the how and the why i'm doing what i'm doing but before i start i want to talk a little about the painting it's a 16 by 20 oil on panel and the palette consisted of cadmium orange burnt sienna viridian terra verde diocazine purple ivory black and flake white hue this painting was a private commission for a collector uh, not sure if he wants me to say his name or anything, but he was very dope to work with. Uh, best kind of client you could hope for, so a uh, big shout out to him. All right, so let's start with what you're watching right now, which is the underpainting. I use raw umber, flake white hue, which is a lead-free version of flake white and a thinner either Gamsaw or Topinoid, but most of the paintings that I do. The main objective of my underpainting is to establish basic values and lighting. I'm um, basically recreating my preliminary drawing and paint. I tend to change my process of underpainting every so often, but for this painting, I use the wipeout technique. It's very fast and very easy to execute. You basically cover the whole painting with raw umber and wipe out the light areas. You can essentially leave it like that, or you can add white to the brightest areas to add a greater value range. The final effect is like a cross between a grisaille, you know, the, the use of opaque whites and grays in the light areas, and a wash painting, which leaves the transparent browns in the shadows. Like I said earlier, it's a pretty fast process, and it only took me about an hour or two to finish. After the underpainting dries, I start what I call the first painting or first color layer. This layer still focuses on the values, but I'm starting to introduce color. I try to keep the color simple and look for a local color of a given area. I use a 50-50 mix, as far as mediums are concerned, of terpenoid and thickened linseed oil. The paint is applied opaquely, but thin enough to see my line work underneath. I usually work from background to foreground, and that's to help me with edge control. Even though I work one area at a time, the piece is pretty quick. I normally can finish it in a day or two. During this phase, I'm trying to see how my overall color scheme will work and to expand my value range. I'm not worried about detail yet, because honestly I had to see if the painting will even work first with all the colors. Uh, this stage is usually where I find out if the painting is going to be a complete dumpster fire or it's actually going to be successful. It wasn't a dumpster fire, thankfully, so I moved on to the next stage. Layer number two. This is where the real work begins. I spend the most time in this stage, sometimes working up to two weeks, if not more on it. Uh, I really 
begin to study my reference and I work slow. I take my time using a semi window shading technique, which means to work one area at a time to completion in the same sequence as the first painting from background to foreground. I don't move on until I'm satisfied with what I painted. That includes textures, color, value, edges, the whole nine. Even though this layer can be a long process and it can be hard, I try to think about it like this. The two previous stages were set up for this one. And when this is done, it's all going to come together. So at the finish in this stage, the painting is going to look complete and it's going to be ready to sign. But I don't stop there. The last and final step of the process is
the fun part, the third and final layer. Now, even though I call it the third layer or the third painting, it isn't just one layer or one painting. The stage normally consists of multiple layers. I just group them as one because they serve the same function. With all the hard work done, I now get to do detail and adjustments. That means glazing, refining, textures, color, and edge adjustments. Anything that's bothering me gets addressed in this stage. And the best part about this layer is that if you don't like something that you put down at this stage, you could just wipe it away and you still have something that is complete underneath. So this is the time you can do some experimenting, just do some, some wild stuff. So just have fun with it. And when I'm happy with it, I sign it, wait for it to dry, varnish it, and send it off to a collector or a client. And that essentially covers my process. I really hope that this helps some of you out there and that you can take some pieces of my process and incorporate it into your own work. Uh, if you guys want me to make more in-depth videos on each layer or any other suggestions for topics on future videos, let me know in the comments below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.